Hello everybody, my name is Run, and I'm going to be showing you how to make a changing tile puzzle in RPG Maker MZ. Alright, first things first, I'm going to show you how this puzzle works. Basically, you can only step on these colored tiles one time. If you step on them more than one time, you lose the puzzle and you have to reset. When you step on all of them only once and you change all their colors, it's going to spawn a treasure chest right over here. So let's go ahead and do it incorrectly the first time. And then now you're going to hear a buzzer noise because we stepped on a tile more than once. So let's go to the switch, reset it, and let's do it the right way this time. And now you can see our treasure chest has spawned. And so we can go grab it. And we got some dragon armor. Yay. Now, admittedly, this puzzle took me a little longer than I thought to make. I thought this would be fairly simple. I also thought that I could use, you know, mostly a common event to handle it, but I wasn't able to find a really effective way to do that that didn't involve like having scripts or something in there, like a, a script call to change self switches and things like that. So I've come up with this template for your tiles. It'll have four pages and it utilizes two switches. And I'm going to show you how to make this. Before we get into this, there's a few things to note here. So you can actually scale this to however big you want. All you have to change is the variable in which you need uh, the amount of tiles stepped on to spawn the treasure chest. So you could make this 24 if you wanted a 24 tile chest, 36, you could keep scaling it up. Also, I like it when there is an actual switch to reset the tiles. You don't have to use the switch to reset the tiles. You can have it to where maybe the person leaves the room and comes back in. I'll show you what you have to do. You just have to change these few switches uh, each time they go out and come back in. And then one last thing before we get started, if you would please, please, please leave me a like down below if you like the video. If you wanna see more creative mechanic tutorials, let me know what kind of mechanics that you would like to see and uh, hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it. All right, now the first thing we need to do is to make a space for our switches here. Uh, like I've said a thousand times, my mapping skills aren't great. So I went ahead and went with this school area because it had a big blank area here and I just built a fence to uh, house these switches. So let's go ahead and load a sample map and we're gonna load the same map here. I'm just gonna kind of rebuild this from scratch. Where is, there's the school, okay. And then it had this tile here, so I'm gonna go to our tile editor. I'm gonna erase all this. And then we're gonna add a fence. So let me see if I remember how to do this. Here, here. One, two, three, four, that works. Here, here, and here. Uh-oh. I believe that's right. One, two, three, four, one. Well, one starts here, two, three. So now we've got our little area for the switches. Okay, now that we've got our area laid out here, we're gonna go ahead and create our tile. So just call this puzzle tile. And then we're gonna choose an image here. Let's see what we've got. I, I think these are fine. You might have your own custom image that you like, but of the RTP assets, those looked the best to me. Where did they go? These. So we're going to choose the dark blue in the right corner here. Let's go ahead and press OK. And then we're going to check this switch option simply to create two switches here. So I want you to create two switches. I already have them here, but for consistency's sake, I'm going to delete these and we're going to restart. So create a switch called Reset Tiles. And then I want you to create one right under it called Freeze Tiles and just press okay, and then uncheck the switch button here. I just wanted to make those at the beginning so that we can use those later. So go ahead and uncheck switch. Okay, now that we have our puzzle tile event here, the next thing we're gonna do is create a conditional branch. And we wanna make sure that you create an else branch here. And then we want to check if switch freeze tiles is on, and press okay. The reason that we're checking to see if freeze tiles is on is that freeze tiles is gonna trigger when you try to step on a tile more than once, and then we want the puzzle to freeze completely so you can no longer step on tiles to change their color. And I'll set that up in the next page. We've got our conditional branch here. If freeze tiles is on, you don't want it to do anything because we have now frozen the puzzle. So we don't want anything to happen when you step on the tile. Under else, we're gonna start our feedback loop for like a nice sound effect saying that, hey, you did this correctly. So let's see here. 
go to sound effects. Let's pick ourselves a nice little sound effect. Let's see with a cursor. Probably decision. There we go. We'll put play decision three there. And then what we want to do is we want to change variables. And we're going to add a variable. Let me delete this once again. Start over. We're going to create a variable called tiles stepped on. And this variable is basically there to trigger the treasure chest when you've hit the number 12, which means you have turned all of the switches on or you've stepped on all the tiles one time. So you're going to make tiles stepped on, press OK, and then you're going to add one when you step on this switch. Press OK. And then the final step here is we're going to make a self switch, uh, self switch A. We're going to turn that on, press OK. And that's it for the first page. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new page that is going to be triggered when self switch A is on. And it is going to be a different colored tile. So let's choose the red one here, indicating that this tile has been stepped on. So this section is done. Next thing you want to do is create a conditional branch. And once again, we're going to choose if freeze tiles is on. Also, make sure you create the else branch. This conditional branch is going to contain what will happen if we try to step on a tile that has already been changed. So the first thing we want to do is play a sound effect that's like, er, you stepped on the wrong tile. So let's go ahead and choose that. Uh, let's, let's choose a buzzer, buzzer noise. Where is it? There we go. Uh, I think that's fine. Now that we've got our buzzer noise, we want to control variables. And then we want to set tile stepped on to zero. The reason we're doing that is because now that you have stepped on this tile more than once, there is no chance for this chest to spawn. And finally, the last thing we want to do is we want to control switches and we now want to turn freeze tiles on. The reason we're turning freeze tiles on is because you're stepping on this more than once. You've made a mistake. And now we don't want any of the other tiles to change so that you can like cheat the puzzle or anything like that. So the puzzle is now frozen because you have essentially made a mistake. You stepped on the wrong tile and that's it for that page. Now we're on to our third page here. This one's going to be the simplest one. This will be the page that handles resetting the tiles back to their base form when you hit the switch. So you want to check switch here, go to that switch that you created earlier called reset tiles. And all we want this page to do, we want it to turn the self switch a off if it is on, which means any red tiles will go back to their base form. And then we also want it to turn the switch reset tiles back off so that this page is null and void and all Puzzle, all puzzle tiles essentially will go back to this, this form. And on to the final page. This is going to be the page that is called when all of the switches have been stepped on. I like to make that a third color. I think it kind of indicates to you that you've done it correctly. You don't have to change the color, but I kind of prefer it that way. So we're going to change it to yellow. And all that's going to be in this event page is you're going to set the conditions for if variable Tile stepped on is greater than or equal to 12. The reason that we're setting it to greater than or equal to 12 is because we're going to have 12 tiles here total. Now, obviously, if you scale your puzzle up to 24 tiles, you would need to set that as greater than or equal to 24. But you kind of get what the, the basic principle is. So our puzzle tile event is completely done. All that we have left to do now is we're going to press OK. We're gonna, you can right click or control C, and then we're just going to paste this all around the fence here until we have a total of 12 of them. There we go. The next thing we need to do is make the switch that resets the puzzle. Let's make our switch here. Take a look. I, I prefer these as far as floor switches go, at least for the RTP. So we're just going to go ahead and choose the red one here. I'm not going to make any kind of animation when you step on the switch. You all can do that. It's, it's fairly simple. Um, a lot of this stuff you can learn from doing things like right clicking, going to quick event creation and kind of see what it does when you press treasure chest. It'll automatically animate the treasure chest for you. You can look at that event, kind of learn from it to see how you would animate the switch being pressed. But as of right now, all this, all we want this switch to do is make a sound effect that the puzzle has been reset. And then we want to, we want it to control the proper switches. 
to reset the puzzle. Let's go ahead and name this event Reset Switch. We want it to play a sound effect. Uh, let's go down to, I think there's a switch category. Yeah. That's got a nice bassy sound to it. Okay. And then we want it to set the switch reset tiles on and freeze tiles off. Okay. Now when we set reset tiles on, or when we trigger that, inside this event page, any whether it's on this page or this page, it's going to then switch over to this one, turn stuff switch A off, and turn the reset tile switch off, and it's all gonna revert back to this first page. And the reason that we're turning freeze tiles off is so you can step on the tiles again. If freeze tile is on, then you cannot step on any of these. So that's why we're turning that switch off. And now our switch to reset the puzzle is completely done. All we have left to do is create the treasure chest. So I'm actually gonna make the treasure chest creation pretty quick here. We're just gonna do a quick event, treasure, and let's make it an item and we'll just make it a, I don't know, a miracle drop. There we go. Now that that treasure chest is created, we're gonna go into it and we wanna set the conditions variable, tile stepped on, it's greater than or equal to 12, which means this chest will only appear, this page will only show when we've stepped on 12 tiles. And just press okay. Now our floor tile puzzle is completely done and we're moving on to the final part, which you all should know by now. Play test, play test, play test. And we're gonna play test it in a variety of ways. So let's go ahead and set our starting position here and let's give it a run. All right, first things first, let's step on a couple of these. <laughs> I already know what I did. That was an easy one to figure out. These events, the switch and the tiles are all set to same as character as far as their physical level on the map. So let's fix that real quick. Start with the switch. We're going to change the priority to below character. Press OK. And then we just need to do that with all of the floor tiles. OK, I'm doing the last one here now. Let's give this another play test. I think it's pretty important to leave that stuff in here because there have been so many times where I was sure I designed a puzzle or mechanic correctly. For instance, there was a boulder puzzle that I showed off recently in a tip video or in another uh, creative mechanic video. And I thought that that puzzle was flawless, but after accidentally, I, I just happened to be play testing my game and noticed that the reset switches did not function correctly with a couple of the boulders. So now I have to go through and figure out why that's happening. But this is why you should always play test and maybe you should play test a little bit earlier. I save it to the end of the video to save time for you guys while you're watching the video, but I usually play test step by step. So as I created the first tile, I would have play tested it. Then I would have placed all the tiles. I would have play tested it again. I would have play tested it at every step of the way. So very, very important. Just play test everything you can and, and, and do it in a variety of ways, which is what we're about to do now. All right, so let's step on a couple of these. And once again, I now already know what the error is. So let's go back into these. These are not triggering because the trigger is set to action button, not player touch. And actually, if I look at my original puzzle, this page, this page, both of these two are set to player touch. The third page is set to parallel. And we did not do that for any of these. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna delete these 12 tiles. We're gonna go back into this tile. We're gonna fix this, player touch, player touch, parallel. Okay, and then we need also need to go into the switch and this also needs to be player touch. All right, let's repaste our event tiles here. Now, hopefully, because otherwise this is gonna be a really unprofessional YouTube video. Hopefully this now works. Okay, moment of truth. Yeah, one, one final issue here is that we did not set the second page to below character. And it's just faster for me to delete these. And uh, go back in here, below character and below character. I kind of, I don't know, personally, I kind of wish the default 
priority was below character, or if you made one page below character, it changed. Uh, it, it's a whole thing. Anyways, press OK. Control C. Control V. This might look really bad in the YouTube video, but I also think it's important to show the playtesting process. So you all can let me know in the feedback below if you'd rather me just like re-record this stuff. But I, I think it's important to show this as well. Okay, let's see what we got here. Perfect. Okay. Now we can't step on any of these tiles. That's beautiful. Now let's give our switch a shot. All right, it reset. Perfect. Keeps resetting. They continue to reset, which is great. All right, now let's do it correctly. Perfect. Okay. Miracle drop was found. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. And the reset switch no longer works because the variable is stuck at 12. So this is this is the intended effect. This is what we wanted to happen. So the puzzle is now done. Like I said, you can scale this to however large you want. You can use whatever tile graphics you want. Um, it can it can be changed in a variety of ways. You can reset it how you want. If you want, you know, maybe this is a door, and instead of having to hit the reset button every time you go to through the door, it resets. You come back in. You try it again. All right, and that is the tutorial for the changing floor tiles. Thank you all so much for hanging out. Please give me feedback on these, like if you like the playtest segment, which once again, I think is very, very important. I, I know any RPG maker devs out there, you know how important it is to playtest, playtest in a variety of ways. You intentionally need to try and break your game. That's what a lot of QA testers do for a lot of game developers. You have to try to break the game in as many ways as possible. Now, granted, we weren't really trying to break the game. It just didn't work from the get go. But you kind of you get what I'm saying. The next video is 100 percent. I've been saying this for like three the past three. We are definitely doing field moves or, or HMs from Pokemon. So think cut where you walk up to a, an obstacle and you cut it out of your path. Um, what other ones? You could do surf, but surf is technically just changing to a ship. Um, strength is definitely one, which will I'll factor in that boulder puzzle that I've made in my game that I'm working on, on the side. And I'll look at the rest of the HMs and stuff. And then I'm also going to be looking at a game uh, called Golden, or series, I guess you would say at this point, called Golden Sun, and they have something called Psy Energy, which they use to grow vines or push giant trees, stuff like that. So that'll be the next creative mechanic. Let me know in the comments down below what kind of creative mechanic videos that you would like to see. What are some of your favorite game mechanics in various video games? As always, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content. Subscribe if you want to see more. And thank you so, so much for watching. Until next time. Bye.